grass and succulent growers, it's Lynn and welcome to September's question and answers video and I'm going to be doing this possibly in about three parts. This is going to be part one and the reason for that is because there was a lot of questions on the last um, Q&A video I did on the, on the August one, I said, put your questions in for September's Q&A. And there was a, there's a lot of questions. So rather than it being a very, very, very long video, it'd be about two hours long, I'm going to do this in three parts. So if your, if your question hasn't been answered in this part one, do stay tuned because it'll be in part two or part three. And I'm going to be doing part two and three over the next week or two. So stay tuned for them. As I say, this is part one. And uh, first of all, thank you guys for your questions. And I just want to say as well, unfortunately, there, there probably won't be a Q&A video for October and possibly not for November either. And that's because we, October, November, me and Hans are going to be very, very, very busy because excitingly, as I've mentioned in previous videos, we're going to be getting a new polytunnel to replace this green one. It's going to be a completely clear one. And we have a hell of a lot of work we have to do both beforehand and after even when the new polytunnel is up we have to prepare it as in bubble wrap it and also we have to do the floor so anyway cut a long story short we're going to be very 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 busy so i'm not going to promise to do a q a video next month and we'll see how it goes for november but i'm, I'm definitely not going to be stopping the q a so as soon as i've got everything sorted and the new polytunnel is all all done and plants all put away i'll continue with a q a monthly series so first of all then i'm going to to mention the the first question from subscriber and that this is subscriber Betelgore's Orion and the question is I have a question on cacti and light levels most resources say cacti need to have bright light but there, is there a difference in, difference in how bright which species need the most light and which will do well with lower than average light for cacti now there's, there's two different types of um, main, main two different types with cactus. You've got the epiphytic cacti, such as these here. These are the commonly known as the Christmas and Thanksgiving cacti, the slumbergeras. And these, these epiphytic cacti definitely can tolerate much lower light levels. And then you've also got the desert types of cacti, such as these here, these lophophoras and all these ferro cactus and Telocactus, gymnoclisiums, and the like, and they need as much sun as possible. So, it really, there are definitely cacti that can take much lower light levels, and there's even uh, cacti such as Ripsalis here, as well as the Christmas and Thanksgiving, these Ripsalis varieties that can even be grown in a north facing window. And rather than go into too much information here, I have made a video on can you, I think, can you grow cacti in a north facing window? And I think I've actually made a video on cactus plants you can grow in a north facing window. So do check them videos out. I'll link them videos down below. And I'll also put one of the videos up above in the video, up in the little icon at the top as well. So do check that out. So, you know, and I've also done a video, do cacti needs sunshine as well? And that's a lot of information in there on, on the, the type of cacti, types of cacti that can tolerate much lower light levels. So cutting a, a longer thing short, can, is there some you can grow in less light than others? Absolutely. Desert types of cacti need to have as much sun as possible. So ideally a south facing window or a window that receives at least three to four hours sun a day. But it does depend on the type of cactus because some can tolerate much lower light levels than many others. And um, obviously if you have a, a epiphytic cacti such as these ripsalis or the or the christmas and thanksgiving cacti then they can definitely even have a north facing window and still grow well and if you want to know if you have what type of cactus you've got you might say well, how do i know if mine is a desert cactus or it's a um or it's a ripsalis or epiphyllum, in other words, an epiphytic cactus, then do check out a video out, out I have made on how to tell the difference between a desert and an, and an epiphytic cactus. And link to that video will also be up above and also down below in the video description. Now, the next question is um, by a wonderful subscriber, Nick, and he has a, a lovely, amazing YouTube channel here called Glass House and Garden. So hi, Nick. And Nick wants to know, do you ever put water in the trays of your cacti? 
And do you allow the plants to soak up from the bottom? Well, the, the short answer to that is yes, I do. And um, I actually made a video probably only a week or two ago on should you bottom water cacti? And I explain in there that sometimes it's, there are times when I have to bottom water certain types of cacti if they're very overhanging in their pots. For example, some of these types like that and it's difficult to get in to water them properly. And uh, I always prefer to water from the top if I, if I can. But there are certain times when I have to water from the bottom. And I, if you want to watch that video, go to a lot more information on there also on should you bottom water your cacti. So links to that video will also be up above and down below in the video description. Now the next question is by subscriber Tim1280 and, and uh, Tim wants to know if I, I had a cactus die is it okay to replace it with three new ones? <laughs> well the answer to that is yes of course and sometimes when you lose cacti it makes room for more. However what I'll also say is to look at why did you lose that cactus you need to find out you know why it died and rather than it just being disposable thinking oh that cactus has died I'll just get another one and when that dies I'll get another when that dies I'll get another you want to look at what's caused it to, to die and if you're new to growing cacti and you're you're having this problem I would probably um, it, it, the best advice I could do is actually to research as much as you can about caring for cactus and that particular type of cactus you've got and uh, do watch my videos for lots more care care videos on there on different types of cacti and how to care for cacti and succulents but um, obviously the answer to that is why has your cactus died so don't just rush out and replace with lots more because you've lost some you want to know what's causing it and there's many 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 different causes of why your cactus can die but um, on, a, on, a, on a funny note yes of course you can replace it but do do your research on how you can care for cacti as much as possible so if you haven't done make sure that you're subscribed now then, the next question is by subscriber Simru Cactus. And the question is, I have a gorgeous grafted cactus, which is a gymnoclysium, and it's all purple without chlorophyll. So it's obviously one of the moon cacti. And I can't it can't grow without the dragon fruit graft. The moon cactus, obviously, if you're not familiar, it's a gymnoclysium myhavinci. This is one of mine here this is grown on its own roots but you commonly see them the nickname sort of the, the red cap cactus they're sometimes in deep purple colors or bright red colors and they're usually grafted onto these hyloserious cacti dragon fruits which are these here so um yep it's great then what sorry simu cactus wants to know the dragon fruit cactus is growing lots of growth out of the sides can you propagate these growths or should they just be pulled off and disposed of? Well, the good news is, yes, you can propagate them. This is my um, collection of many of my Hylocerius dragon fruits here. And this is how you'll often commonly see the, um, the graft. You'll often see these Gymnoclysia moon cacti um, often grafted onto these. And I personally don't know why they actually use the Hylocerius as a grafting stock because it's a weak grafting stock. It's actually a cactus that is very, very tropical and, epi and it's an epiphytic, sort of partly epiphytic cactus. It can't take any cold. If I was to leave these out in the winter with just five Celsius, which is what I keep this, this greenhouse at, it would just turn to mush literally overnight. So if you have one of these moon cacti, these Gymnoclysium myhenovinches, it's really important that you overwinter it indoors unless you live in a very warm climate in winter you want to it, it can't take any colder than 10 celsius 50 degree fahrenheit and that's it's not that the gymnoclysium can't take the cold they, they can be very cold hardy but the grafting stock these hylocerius cannot take um, any cold they're very rock prone it would just collapse and then you're left with a with a gymnoclysium that can't survive because it's lost its grafting stock so obviously coming back to um, what what uh, what simu cactus wanted to know can you uh, cut these growths off and propagate them well yes you can now i'm not sure what your cactus looks like simu cactus but say you've got the the moon say like this is the grafting stock and you've got the moon cactus the gymnoclysium on the top there and you've got all these growths coming out such as these all you have to do is is cut them off and then let let the growths 
obviously unless they're really unhealthy growth just cut them off and prune them back but if they're healthy enough and you want to grow a dragon fruit hylocerus cactus on its own i mean it's a lovely plant say so it, it is tropical so it does need warmth but it's gorgeous on its you know on its own then take the cutting let the cutting dry for about three to four days and then pot up in a, in a gritty cactus soil and uh, just lightly spray with a bit of water to encourage it to root but they're very easy to propagate so yes you can now the next question is by my wonderful friend Ziggy and Ziggy has an awesome cactus channel called Ziggy's Cactus Channel so hi Ziggy and uh, Ziggy wants to know, my question is, do you have any cold hardy Apuntias that can live outside in the snow? Well, yes, I have. And I'll just take you up to where our Apuntia prickly pears are. We have some outside in the yard as well, but this is where we keep the majority of them. Very prickly little beasties. And I have actually grown some Apuntia humifusas from seed a few years ago now. And this is what they are now, little cuties there. And uh, that one there as well. And these are actually very cold hardy. They can actually survive even in the, the Irish climate. And they can also take plenty of sort of damp and snow in the winter time. So hopefully one day we'll be able to plant these out in the garden. I sort of like them here. But they are very cold hardy and grown from seed. So yes, Iggy, a Puntia humifusa. The next question is by my lovely friend Vera, Supercat, here on uh, YouTube. And Vera wants to know, one of my telocactus secretes honeydew from its areoles. And this attracts ants. Do I have to wash it off? Will they put mealybugs on the roots? Now, the areoles, by the way, guys, this is the, the little pink cushions where the spines come out of, as you can see here. That's what's the difference between cacti and uh, euphorbias and other type of succulents, is that cacti have areoles, which are these, with the little, little spines come out of. But so, there are certain types of cacti who actually secrete a bit of a sticky... Um, sticky honeydew sap from these areoles. Telocactus, for example, which are these here, are very prone to it. And especially ferrocacti, I also notice it with my ferrocacti, they seem to do this. And also um, many sorts of apuntias also do this. So although the, the honeydew itself is harmless to the actual cactus, it can attract black sooty moles, which again is pretty harmless to the cactus. But this unfortunately does attract ants. And while ants may not directly harm your cactus either, they do breed, there can be a bit of a spreader for mealybugs. So if you have this sticky sap, it will, it will attract ants and ants will sort of go onto your cactus. They, they will feed off this sticky honeydew from the areoles. And this then encourages mealybugs to spread. And, and yes, if, they, if the ants go down into the soil, they can also spread root mealybug. So that's why I like to remove any of this sticky honeydew. And how, what I do is I get a little cotton bud one of these little q-tips tip it in rubbing alcohol and then i would just go around like that and just get off the arrows i don't tend to have too much of a problem with it on mine i mean this did have it a little bit in the summer but i think I've, it's all cleaned off now it's quite easy to remove with rubbing alcohol you can also use a little bit of dish soap as well a gentle dish soap in a bit of warm water and use a little tiny brush or a little q-tip and just clean it off that's the best way also i find using spraying with neem oil mixed with haughty cultural soap also i find in my experience helps to keep this stickiness away so yes i would remove it vera because it does help to prevent any um, any signs of like mealybugs from from spreading onto the plants now the next question guys i had to laugh when i i saw this subscriber's name the next question is by farting lithops what a fantastic name very funny indeed and uh, farting lithops wants to know have you ever bought a cactus from overseas, e.g. Italy or China? Um, I'm worried about they will die in shipping or they'll get pests. Now, um, I had to, the answer to that is uh, now, because since Brexit uh, and also with these new special plant sanitary regulations you have to get, sending plants outside of um, Ireland and the UK is a bit of a nightmare. 
I'm up in Northern Ireland, which is even more complicated because I, I, obviously Ireland, the whole of Ireland is, is divided between the Northern Ireland, which is still part of the UK, and then the Southern Ireland, which is part of um, still part of Europe. So it gets even more complicated. So it's just all this thing about sending plants and mailing plants is a bit of a nightmare now. Even even getting off Amazon has become a nightmare because I used to get a lot of my plant products from Amazon because it was always free delivery within the UK. And now since all the Brexit and the change of rules, it's we sort of come into Europe with postage with certain items. So. I don't personally buy anything now from abroad and that that's that's just me however in the past I've ordered quite a few things online mostly from Germany and Holland from nurseries very reputable nurseries such as Helmut Macht and, and Kakteen Haag and Ulish Kakteen very good I don't tend to buy from eBay or anything but there are some very good eBay sellers I know that um, many of my friends have got very good reputable sellers on eBay from different parts of the world so it really does it does depend if, if you can trust that seller enough. However, when it comes to certain countries that are way out of Europe and other places like that, you do have to be very careful. Especially, I just want to mention, if you're on Facebook, there's a lot of plant sellers on Facebook. And there, there's some genuine ones, but a lot of them are scammers. There's a lot of scammers, and I know many friends who have got caught out with these people who pretend to be have different they have fake profiles and they pretend to be selling plants and then uh, they'll get you to give all your details um on online to them in messages and then they'll take your money and they're literally not even selling plants they're just after a few quid and that's disgusting so you have to be very very careful personally myself if you if you can trust a very good reliable ebay seller and you you sort of got a you know that that person or you've got good they've got a good reputation from somebody else you know then that's okay um and also when it comes to buying from abroad if they're a good the good seller personally as i say myself it's a lot of hassle now with all these new plant regulations so i just don't do it um i i tend to just buy locally and i'm lucky that here in the cactus society we have a lot of other growers we can swap and exchange extra plants with so um that's the answer to that is I used to buy abroad but not anymore now the next question is by my wonderful friend Daz here at Cacti Mania here on YouTube so hi Daz Daz has an awesome uh, cactus channel as well here on YouTube Cacti Mania and Daz wants to know what is your number one cactus or succulent plant that's on your wish list that you'd love to add to the collection now, <laughs> I have quite a few on my wish list, um, including the, um, oh gosh, Ulicina, Ulicina, um, that's one as well, it sort of looks like little donuts, the way, the way that cactus grows, it's amazing, but, um, and, and also a Lophoceros uh, Shotty as well is also on my wish list, but the one I really, really, really want to add to my collection is Astrophytum Caput Medusae. And uh, we have quite a few astrophytums in our collection. This is sort of my old ornatum and my old uh, Capricorn ornatum here and a few other ones. But this, uh, the Caput Medusae is one that I really, really am trying to um, well, hopefully get in the future as well because it is very unique in its appearance. These are some of my other astros. It, it actually looks more like an agave the way it grows, almost almost a little bit like Luxembourgia. it's awesome and that is uh, definitely one on my future wish, li wish list so Astrophytum Caput Medusiae and the next the next question is by my wonderful friend Claire and her lovely lov lovely little son Jack and Claire also has an amazing channel here on YouTube called Cactus Cove so hi Claire and Jack and Claire wants to know I know you have a lot of crystals and you put them on your pot plants or have them nearby what crystals do you recommend placing with cactus to benefit them now I absolutely love crystals and minerals and it's the other passion I have in my life besides uh, cacti and succulents and I, I do have a massive collection of crystals some of them all around the house some of them are in drawers some are in cabinets and uh, I do love to put them around the plants. I don't necessarily have any as such in the polytunnel. I used to have a lot jotted around on the plants, but I, I found having them on the tables was encouraging, sort of pests can hide under there and that. So I just think it's easier 
to just have it free where I can just lift the plants up and have, have the tables quite free. So that, I've got a little crystal in there. I do sort of pop them around. But my indoor house plants, I do have a lot of crystals on them as well. So the ideal crystals to use in personally for plants, the two main ones that I would recommend will be clear quartz because that's an amplifier of energy and that's always a good one to, to have as well. It's sort of good energizer and also jade. Um, jade mineral is a lovely one you can get the little tumble stones of jade and pot them in the pots I also like to use rose quartz and amethyst as well and um, I have them all over the the house and around the plants jotted all around and I, I love to see it but but if you're using amethyst and rose quartz do bear in mind it that if you've got them with cacti and they're in a sunny window then um, rose quartz and amethyst can fade a little bit so maybe you put it in a little side where it's not going to get too much sun because you don't want the lovely colors on them fading but I've made a video on why I like to use crystals for um, plants so do check that video out if you want to know why I like to use crystals with plants as i say the only reason why i don't have have so many in here now is because it's easier for me when i'm taking plants off and everything to have it clear but my house plants um, and cacti in the house have got lots of crystals on them so um there we go <laughs> so do check that video out i'll link that video up above and down below in the video description and the next question is by by claire's lovely little son jack and jack wants to know what is the tallest cactus you have? And what is the tallest cactus Hans has? Well, I'm going to, um, th funny enough, this, I'm here now in, in this polytunnel and I've got two very large tall cacti. But these, uh, this one is probably the tallest one that Hans has. And this is the Pilosa serius azureus. And I'll just take you round here so you can see better. It's actually one that he grown, sorry about the lighting, it's actually one he grown from seed. Oh, possibly about 15 years ago now. And uh, it is very, very, very large. And that's possibly, that's probably about almost, if not seven feet high. I think the roof is seven feet high. So it's about seven feet high grown from seed. He's also grown another from seed, which is a big one as well, which I'm going to show you outside. And um, this is my big um, Trichocerus Pacanoi crossed with Scopolicola, but it's not the tallest one I have. I'm going to take you outside and show you our other two giants. Now, here I am out in our yard and the tallest one I have is I'll just show you another Pilosa serious Azureus and that is about eight feet high and I'll just come around so you can see there if there's two actually in the same pot and this is one I got from um, Dublin from a guy who lived in Hoth beautiful part of Dublin and um, I, when I got it it was about this high he'd had it since a kid and uh, so I don't know how old this is but it'd be some brave age and this is one we have to overwinter on our staircase because it's way too tall um, one it's too tall for the polytunnel even our new one we're going to get and it's also um, not a not a cold hardy cactus Pelosa serious has to be overwintered indoors so we bring it into the house on the staircase because that's where it's got enough headroom for it but it probably has to come a time when I'll have to probably chop this because it's not practical to to be lifting such heavy tall plants and this one here is is a trichocerius and this is one that Hans has grown from seed and that's also probably about almost seven feet high as well there and he had grown this from seed would be 50 probably about 50 years ago now and uh, he's had to cut it back many times because he used to have this in his apartment when he lived in Sweden and when he had to move apartments many times he had to chop it down and re retake it as a cutting again so this is a bit of a, a giant and amazing that he's grown from seed don't know what type of trichocerus it is but it's never flowered mainly because we it's overwintered in a warm house as well this is too tall for the the roof on our on our greenhouse and uh, that is unfortunate because I think if we could give it a proper cold winter rest like Trichocerius do like it would come into the most amazing of flowers so there we go Jack our two um, biggest tallest cactus plants in our collection now the next question is by subscriber David Robbins and this this made me laugh 
Annie wants to know, my question is not cactus related. Your partner's Hans's dreadlocks are really long. How long did it take for him to grow them that long? Well, it took, it took Hans about 16 years and they're quite remarkable. They are so long. And obviously there's going to come a time because Hans is in his, in his 70s now, um, 71. So there's going to come a time when he's going to have to chop them off, obviously. <laughs> but um, while he can get away with them still long, then that's great. But no, it took 16 years and... Um, David Hans says thank you very much for asking. <laughs> now the next question is by my wonderful friend Natalie who lives in Dublin and uh, Natalie wants to know should I wonder if you can quest question questionate <laughs> I like that word what the most and less frequent rhythm for watering your cacti and succulents is in the summer. Example is that once is it is every two weeks when the weather is is every two weeks when the weather is bad on twice a week when it is hot. Now, I would always recommend in the spring and summer, I normally water my cacti and succulents every time the soil has totally dried out in their pots. Once they're totally dry, I'll give them a little bit of water again. But this summer was very odd. We had a great June. It was, it was very sunny and warm and I had to water them pretty much it's about once a week, give them a good water and then they'll be totally dry then the following week and I'd water them again. However, that was followed by a terrible July. It was wet, wet, wet and not particularly warm either. It was just vile weather. And August was a bit better. It was certainly sunnier in August, but it was still rainy and not good. So I did something very different than I would normally do um, during the summer months. I didn't really water them much at all. In fact, that the whole of July was that damp and wet and not particularly warm. I didn't water any of them. I just didn't water. I didn't really have to because although they were dry in their pots, the lack of sun and the cool temperatures and the high humidity from the, the rain, I didn't really need to water them. They weren't shriveling. They were just doing nothing. They were just sitting there. And many of my cacti, they were all in bud. I had many coming to bud for the first time, especially a lot of my Echinopsis hybrids. Literally just dropped all their buds, which was very, very disappointing. But you can't do anything about the weather. So obviously when it comes to watering, if the weather is very bad and it's literally sunless, like this type of weather today, but constantly and rainy like it was in, in July, I don't water at all. I would just keep an eye on them. If they look like they're shriveling, then I'd give them a water. But when it's very hot, and this is a, another thing where it is a bit difficult sometimes to judge exactly how much water to give. When it's very hot, obviously I will water them roughly about once a week, give them a good water and then um, water them again. The cacti in very small pots such as these, I may have to water every two to three days because they dry out so quick in these pots. So it really does depend on the size of your plant and what type of plant you have. With epiphytic cacti, I will still be watering them even, even during the miserable dry weather that we had I would keep these watered all the time and I even do in the winter too because they're epiphytes so that's that's um, what I do with them now however last summer was a totally different we had a heat wave and I'm not talking about normal hot weather where I'd water them every time the soils dried out about once a week roughly this wet last year was very 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 hot and it got scorching in this polytunnel and the plants were drying out literally i couldn't give them enough water like i'd come and water them of the evening and then the following day they'd be bone dry again it was that hot it was really hot and then i actually decided it was that hot i noticed a lot of plants were sort of sort of not really doing a lot even and i know you have to be very careful because if you have extreme heat Cacti will also have a bit of a dormancy, like it's, it's, it's finding it right and I, I know a few growers that were watering as normal during the heat wave here in Ireland and some of the plants just collapsed because they, the hot, they closed themselves down and rotted. So I actually withdrew a little bit from watering and I think I made a video at the time about should you water cacti during a heat wave and a heat wave can depend on what country you're living in. I mean, if we get sort of weather like 28 28c 29c 30c temperatures here in Ireland then that's classed as a heat wave for us because we don't usually get them type of temperatures in summer it's usually at the most sort of 
24, 25C on a very good day. So we were not used to them temperatures. And I know in England it was like 40C and, and warmer in many parts. So that's classed as a heat wave for us. But if you're living in California, for example, and you're used to them type of temperatures, and uh, that's normal for your cacti. My cacti were not used to them type of temperatures. So that's why I, I withdrew from giving them as much water during last year as well. But, you know, obviously if you're growing in... Um, in a climate where it's, them temperatures are normal and your cacti are used to it, then it, it's not classed as a heat wave then. So it, again, it's, it is a bit complicated, but basically I would just have to judge the weather on a daily, a daily basis and say July, I really withdrew from watering the majority of these except the epiphytes. And then August, we had a lot more sunshine and it was warmer, but it was also very, still a lot of heavy rain in between. Sunshine one minute and then rain. But I, I did continue to water them quite as normal because the temperatures were up and when the sun came out, it was very warm. And um, September, the beginning of September anyway, it's been beautiful weather, like really warm, sunny, absolutely gorgeous. A bit of an Indian summer. Now it's sort of cold down down a bit and uh, bound to the rain. Now I, I given all mine, all my desert cacti their last watering last week and that in other words that was coming into the second week in September I'm not going to water any of these now at all until probably next April depending on the weather and obviously I wanted to stop watering a little bit earlier because all of these plants including these big giants all the ones in our yard and the other little white polytunnel all got to be coming into the house and we have to collapse this old polytunnel down and clear the yard as well and then put the new one up and it's a hell of a lot of work so obviously the lighter the plants are to lift especially these giants the less work for us so um, I've stopped watering and um, I think if you haven't stopped watering your cacti and you live in a sort of climate sort of island UK or Europe, I would recommend, at the cooler parts of Europe now, I'd recommend sort of stop watering your cacti, your desert cacti anyway, definitely by now, to allow them to um, dry out fully for the winter rest. Again, it depends whether you have your cacti inside a warm house for winter or you overwinter them in a, in a greenhouse or polytunnel or other place. So it depends on many things, but do check out the videos. Many videos on my YouTube channel on how to water cacti and succulents, including during the summer months. Now, Natalie also has another question about Hoyas, but I'm going to answer that question in part two of this Q&A video. As I mentioned, it's going to be three parts. So many of you will have less asked questions um, for the, the September Q&A video. But if it's not in this video, it's going to be in part two or part three. So do stay tuned. I haven't forgotten about you. <laughs> so Natalie, I'll answer the Hoya one in part two. So the last one, uh, the last question for part one anyway, is by my wonderful subscriber, Terry Gent. And Terry wants to know, do you have shadier spots in your polytunnel or do you just place plants under your tables? What plants are positioned in the sunnier area? How about the shadier areas? Now, with this, this polytunnel here, I have all of the cacti and succulents that need as much light as possible on the top of the table, so of all of these succulents here, all of the desert types of cacti that are sun worshippers. I have these all on the top, all my euphorbias here that I that I put out here for the spring and summer, Hylocereus, and um, also many others as well, Apuntias and my Echinopsis as well and astros i have these all on the top tables to get as much much sun as they can because they are sun lovers but obviously with my cacti that are more that are more um shade loving now i've got these ripsalis that can definitely take shade but they do okay here in this polytunnel because it has, has got a cover on as you can see with our new what clear one we're going to have to find somewhere else i might put these into the house to because it might be a bit too bright for them but they do okay up there as well but with my ones that do definitely do better with more shade, such as my some of my aloes, hawarthias, gasterias, I do have them a little bit in a more shadier position here, under these under these shelving. They still get tons of light, as you can see, the light comes all the way through. And these type of aloes here and the gasterias seem to be like a lot more light as well. So yep, 
this is my little shadier position and that Hawarthi has got a little bit too much sun which is why I've got it under there now definitely tight like the shade and uh, the same as well with some of these aloes here this seems to be a little bit more shadier at this side but what I do here I have space under these tables and normally what I'll be doing with the winter time is I have plants out in the yard also and sort of epiphyllums and things like that that can take a little bit more shade I would put these under the table here I'm going to be doing that when we get our new polytunnel as well it's going to be because it's going to be a completely clear one so whereas this is covered with the floor it's going to be clear so I'm going to have to make sure I put them under tables to give them more shade so my shadier spots are under the table and also here as well I have a little bit more shade under there for some of my other aloes and epiphyllums there and all of my desert cacti all on the top to get more light so that's all the questions answered for part one of September's Q&A video and do stay tuned as I mentioned for part two and part three that I'll try and get up possibly part two up for next weekend and part three a few days after that because it's easier than having a two hour long video so as I mentioned if you ask the question and it's not not been in this one it will be in part two or part three and thank you so much again for um for all your support guys and for watching and before you go do leave a comment in the in the comments down below even a heart or smiley face because every comment really does help the algorithm and if you haven't done already don't forget to subscribe do click that notification bell you can also follow me on instagram twitter and facebook at desert plants of avalon and for more growing tips check out the my articles and growing tips on my website desertplantsofavalon.com I want to wish you all a fantastic cactus and succulent powered day. Cactus powered.